Hey everyone, I'm Agfa and great to see you here today. So today we're going to look at these things behind me. Uh, we're going to look at the flip-flops. And if you don't know what the flip-flop is, it's a device which can turn essentially a button push into uh, something that behaves like a lever. So the first time it gets a signal, it will turn the output on. And the next time it gets a signal, it'll turn the output off. Okay, so we're going to look at three. Uh, the one far over there to my right, your left, is the smallest T flip flop you can get. The one behind me is possibly the best. Um, and the one over here on your right is my new T flip flop, um, which is the smallest one wide tileable T flip flop in Bedrock Edition. And I say it's mine, my invention. Um, a lot of the credit for this goes to a guy called Jonathan Peters, um, who's a a uh, great Minecrafter. He's got a, a little YouTube channel, or it's not as small as it used to be, because he got a shout out from Navy Nexus the other day. Uh, well deserved as well. But um, his latest video he posted, he he kind of was wandering around one of his worlds and was pointing out some one wide tileable T flip flops he'd made. And I'd been trying to make those and had failed, so um, I paid a lot of attention to that, and I took his design and I've changed it around a bit. I've made it smaller and I've added um, a bell in here, which I'll explain why later. And uh, yeah, so now we've got the smallest one wide T flip flop, um, which is great. So thank you, Jonathan. And I'll, I'll link his channel and uh, the video down in the description below. Okay, so let's dive straight in. <laughs> Okay, let's start this little beauty here. This is, I think, the smallest T flip flop you get in uh, Minecraft Bedrock Edition. And it is just two by two, so it's really small. Um, basically, what you've got is two droppers. Uh, this one's pointing up, this one's pointing out forwards, and a hopper here, which will point back into this bottom dropper. So if I've got an item here in the bottom dropper, nothing in here. I sound like a magician, did I? There's nothing, nothing on my sleeve. Um, so I press the button, and the item will come from the bottom dropper up to the top dropper. There it is. And that will cause its comparator to light up and come on. And then when I press it again, you can see the item gets pushed out of here, gets sucked up by the hopper, and goes back into the bottom dropper down here. And the comparator goes off. So that'll keep switching each time. And um, it's great because it's, it's tiny and, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. The The issue I've seen with this one, well, there's two, two issues, really. One is it's not tileable. So if you imagine I had another dropper here, um, this, I have to hard power this dropper to make this one power. That would also power this one, and so they'd interfere with each other. Um, so you can't actually tile this at all. The other thing is that I have seen items shoot out over the hopper. Um, and that obviously will break the system. That bit is fairly easy to fix. So you can put a, a block here, for example, and then you know that uh, when your item gets shut out, worst case, it'll hit this wall and fall back down. There are a couple of different ways to build this as well, and I think it's worth just having a quick look at those. So I put a hopper up here, and I can put my um, another dropper facing back towards me here. My input moves down. So where are my buttons? My input moves down here. And my comparator, doing well on, I leave all my, the right stuff behind. There we go. The comparator goes there. So now let me put a lamp on there so we can see it more easily. I press the button, the lamp comes on. Press it again, it goes off. And that's because now what happens is when I press the button, it actually um, shoots the item up here, across into the hopper, and back down here. And the second time, it shoots it back across to here. OK? And then the third way, very quickly, how to build this um, is let's go back to a little bit how we were before. And now we're going to put a container here. And I'm going to put my comparator on top of the block. 
So on top of a block at the back like this. Um, so the problem now is that you have to power it from the top up here or the side, which may not really be an issue depending on your build. Um, and I've got this container here, which is great because now when I'm pushing stuff out, it always goes in the container and drops down here. That doesn't make any difference to the speed of a system, by the way. It's still exactly the same. So now I press the button, it lights up, press it again, it goes off. So yeah, that's pretty neat. But uh, we're after one wide and tileable. So let's uh, canter over to the next one. And um, actually, do you know what? I, I really had an unnatural dislike for this T flip flop um, when I first came across it. And I'm warming to it more and more because it's actually pretty good. Um, so this is these are dispensers at the top. They have water buckets inside them. And they're pointing downwards. And what I've done down here is I've set up some um, stairs. So I'll show you how I've done that. So the stairs are arranged like this. Like that. So actually, when I drop my water down, uh, it can't fall through the bottom. It can't fall out the sides. And that means that um, even if I'm not building it into the ground, uh, it's only too high, which is pretty neat. So yeah, so when I um, press one of these buttons, the water will get dispensed into this stair block here. That means that I go from having a non-stackable item in here to having a stackable bucket. And the power of my redstone will go down from two to one. So let's see that happen. So you can see the redstone goes down to power one and my light goes out. And um, this happens on all of them. It's absolutely fine. This never goes wrong. I was also worried that somehow, um, if you're dispensing down into a trench or something, that you would end up with water source blocks being formed and they would stop working. But actually it doesn't, um, it carries on. You can dispense water from a, a dispenser into a water source. So it doesn't care, it just carries on and it's perfect. And the other advantage of this is it's really, really fast because dispensers can react to a pulse every two ticks and so can comparators and dust. And therefore, actually, you can switch this every two ticks, which is, I think, probably the fastest um, T flip flop as well. So it is one, two, three, four, five by two. Um, yeah, pretty tidy. OK, so on to this one. And um, as I said in the intro, Jonathan Peters deserves a lot of credit for this because um, I, I tried and failed several times to to build a one wide tileable T flip flop. And the bell is really important because bells in Bedrock Edition have a very special property where if you ring them, they'll be detected by an observer, um, but they will only be detected once. So this is a, a little monostable circuit, basically, a bell and an observer gives you a one tick pulse monostable circuit. So even if I've got a button here where the button goes on and comes off, um, this bell will only be detected once by the observer. So same principle. I've got some kelp in here. The kelp is going to get pushed into the hopper. The hopper will be locked by this torch, so it'll stay here. That'll light the comparator. The next time I press the button, the torch actually goes off for one tick, and that allows the kelp to move back here, and the comparator goes off. So hang on to your eardrums. Here we go. You see the comparator's on because the kelp's come across here. And the next time round, it'll go off. So, you know, clearly the disadvantage of this one is it's very noisy. Uh, if you built this in a village, your villagers would be running for their beds every time it went off. Um, but it is uh, pretty tiny. So it's, you know, it's four by two. And... Um, you know, I think that could be really useful for some compact builds. The other thing just to point out is if you already have a one tick pulse coming into here, um, then you don't need that to be a bell. It could be something else. It could be a I don't know, hopper, say, because the hopper would get locked by a one tick pulse. That's detected by the observer. Um, 
and one tick later it would unlock again but the observer that's too quick for the observer to send another signal through and so it would work perfectly fine with a one tick pulse coming into here but um, for most cases I think you probably end up with more than one tick pulse um, so it's good to have the option of a bell well, thanks for watching, fellow bedrockers, and I hope to see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, um, if you find some really good uses for any of these T flip flops, including the, the new one over here, then do let me know. I'd be really interested to hear all about it. And um, I hope to see you when I come back for the next video. So have a think about subscribing so you don't miss that. And uh, see you next time. Bye bye.